What's the capital of Turkey? Istanbul, right? No. Ankara. What's the capital of Australia? Sydney. Nope. Canberra. How about Canada? Well, by now you're on to me, so you're probably thinking it definitely isn't Toronto. Maybe Montreal? Nope. Ottawa. I'm guessing most of you have never even heard of these cities, yet they're in some pretty relevant nations. Why is that? Why would the capital city not be the largest or most influential city? Well, there's a number of different reasons, and some are far simpler than others. The first one is just replaced relevancy, when another city replaced the capital city in size and influence. Take Illinois, for example. Chicago was nothing more than the Swamp Village when Springfield was founded, and 19th century Illinoisians thought that the Mississippi River was going to be way more important in the Great Lakes region. Next is the compromise between factions. When two or more powerful factions are vying for control of the capital to be in their sphere of influence, or at the very least outside of their opponent's sphere of influence. This is why Ottawa is the capital of Canada and not Toronto or Montreal. It's right on the border of the very English Ontario region and the very French Quebec region. Also, it's sort of in the middle between Montreal and Toronto, so they can share that influence too. Another is that the capitals are a big deal militarily, so placing the capital outside of a vulnerable area is very important. Istanbul is across the water from mainland Turkey and is only a short trip from one of their biggest rivals, Greece, who would love nothing more than to take back Constantinople. Although Ankara was chosen for many different reasons, one of the biggest ones was that it would make it difficult for an invading army to capture it. Another important point is geographic compromise, where a country chooses an area that is physically in the middle of the realm or at least in the center of the population distribution. Washington DC was chosen because it was, at the time, in the center of the nation. And maybe having the biggest city is a bad idea for the nation as a whole. Influential cities make a lot of demands, and it can be all too easy for the government to give in to those demands over other regions of government control. Over time, these cities begin to dominate further, which only increases the influence and therefore creates a cycle. Take Paris. Most people see France as Paris and not Paris, or London and un-London, or Reykjavik and Mars. It's not all bad for the other cities in the nation, but these megacities often get the advantage with labor and wealth. For example, Brazil built Brasilia in order to get Rio de Janeiro out of the limelight and encourage Brazil to focus more on its untapped interior, which they accomplished with mild results. And sometimes, you know, capitalization just happens. Like how Brussels became the capital of the EU. Back in the 1950s, when the EU's predecessor was founded, no one can really decide on what the capital should be. They decided to trade capitals between countries in alphabetical order. Belgium went first, and to this day, France has yet to take their turn. So all capitals are chosen for a reason, but some are more arbitrary than others. And you know what? That's fine. I mean, the throne has to sit somewhere. Thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe.